Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here to show you how to set up Lee and Lee's new wireless RGB cables. These are the cables that connect to your graphics card and your motherboard, and you can see are available in the 24 pin and the 12 volt high power connector here. But you can also get them in other variations with the promise of the EPS power connectors for the top left of the motherboard coming at a later date. And also you can get various different versions of the GPU power cable. I will say that it is very important to make sure you get the one with the controller because you can buy these cables without the controller and that will cause you problems if you don't already have the wireless LCD fans or the wireless fans included in a system with the RGB controller, the wireless controller that you'll need. More on that in a little while, but I'll leave links in the description so you can find out more about that. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to wire these into your system, connect them up, and then control them with Leon Lee's software at the end of the video. So watch out for timestamps to jump to the relevant points. If you don't know already, these cables are designed to work as an extension lead for the power cables in your system. So they can be seen at the front of the system, showing off some very neat cables, and then connecting up and allowing you to control the RGB lighting. So for demo purposes, I'm using a Lee and Lee Edge power supply unit here, but you can use any other power supply that you happen to have in your system. You'll have a 24 pin power connector that generally connects to the motherboard. So at one end, you might have two cables that connect to the power supply end. And then the other end, you'll have a large 24 pin power connector, which plugs into the motherboard. Instead of that, what you're going to do is plug the power cables into the power supply. And then the other end will plug into the RGB cable that then connects to the motherboard. This allows you to create a very neat system. Now, these wireless cables make life a lot easier than the previous model because basically the RGB is powered directly from the 24 pin power cable. So there's no extra cables to plug in, no extra wires to worry about, and no connections to the motherboard from the cable itself. So this makes it very straightforward to install. So you basically plug your 24 pin power cable into the RGB extender, and then the RGB cable goes into the motherboard, and that's that. There's nothing to worry about there. Very minimal fuss. These are much easier than the previous version and worth considering for that reason alone. But you do need the wireless controller. So this is an interesting controller that plugs into the USB port on the back of your motherboard. Outside the case, you plug that in and this can control the RGB lighting extension cables, and also the wireless fans, which I'll do a separate video on. Alongside this, there's also various versions of the wireless GPU cable. In this instance, I'm showing the 12 volt high power cable, and there's a thin, narrow version of this and a thicker one as well, as well as a eight pin variation as well. And the logic will be roughly the same. This is slightly different because it's a bit more customizable than what you can do with it. You can see here there are various different things included in the package, including some white bits so you can swap out the black plastic on the cable if you'd like to. You'll notice also that it has a 90 degree angle connector on it, so this should make it easier to fit into the system. This is a 12 volt high power connection, which means it will work with NVIDIA's latest GPUs. In this instance, a 4070 Ti from Gigabyte. And you can see that this cable then plugs into there. Note that it has some blue pins on it. The idea being that you need to push the cable in until you can no longer see those blue connectors. And that means it's fully seated all the way in and there shouldn't be any problems with melting or other issues that there have been with cables like these in the past, at least in theory, and therefore it should be nice and flush. Also, it will give you more space in the case because it won't be pressing up against the glass because of the angle or the way it runs through. And I'll show you more on that in a little while. This replaces that horrible adapter that you'd get with your GPU, which might require multiple different power cables. So the eight pin power cables, for example, that would usually run to the graphics card and obviously works as an extension of the 12 volt high power cable, which connects to your power supply unit. So again, if you look back at the edge, you'll see that there's a 12 volt high power cable and a 12 volt high power connector on this power supply unit. You need to plug the power cable from that into this port there, make it fully seated at that end, make sure it's pushed all the way in 
And again, same sort of logic that those blue connectors need to be pushed in until they can't be seen so that it's fully flush and fully seated in there. And then you need to plug the other end of that power cable into the extension cable. And then that's that system connected. And just like the 24 pin cable, there is no additional cables coming off of this power cable to run to the motherboard or to any controller to control the RGB lighting because it's done wirelessly and that's why these are called wireless and so although they are technically wires they don't have additional wires so it makes the setup process a lot more straightforward so you can see how that looks. Now as an alternative option I wanted to show you what happens if you've got a 1490 like I have the same cable but the difference here is that the port on this graphics card is the other way up. So actually the connectors go in slightly differently and this might vary from graphics card to graphics card, doesn't necessarily depend on the model, but maybe different brands. But you can see with the standard format of this connector, it's the wrong way around. So the little pins on top are actually on the bottom of the connector on the GPU. So it would end up being the wrong way up if you put it in the system like this, which is obviously not ideal, but that's why you get a screwdriver included in the box. Unscrew the four screws on this little bit here, and then we can take it off and we can flip it around. I'm gonna show you the steps for doing that. And that will then allow you to obviously use the cable with the same logic, but in a GPU like this. So there's a little bit of fiddling and faffing in order to do, and a bit of a, downside but obviously makes it nice and flexible because you don't have to have different models you can just adjust it yourself take the plastic clips off from along the cable unscrew the screws at the end there as i've shown you and we're basically going to remove things and flip it over so at the other end of the cable we need to remove this black plastic clip as well it pulls out with some fiddling at the edges from two couple of clips there and then comes off. This separates out the power cable and the RGB part of the power cable. And you can see what that looks like. Obviously you can see the little controller on the end there as well. And then this attachment to the power cable. And then you've got it separated like this. The idea here is then to flip over the right angle connector on the other end and adjust it and then put the RGB cables back on so we're basically just going to flip it around and that way they will then be able to plug it into the 4090 and have it basically work the same way so that you'll be able to come from below the graphics card and have it look really nice as you've seen from the clips at the beginning of this video. So it's a little bit fiddly to do but it's fairly straightforward. There are instructions included in the box in case I'm not being clear but hopefully it's giving you some insight into how to do it. So basically we need to move the RGB cable to the other side of the cable itself and then the right angle connector is just flipped over, screwed back into its housing and then adjusted. It's worth noting, as I said, that there are white options here as well. So you can take the black parts off and swap them out for white ones. So if you want the white cable with white connectors, you can do that. Those are included in the box as well, but I chose not to do that because I quite like the contrast between the black and the white. So I'm just sticking with that and keeping it in that scheme. So push that right angle connector back into its housing and then just simply screw the screws back in and you now have a cable that will fit nicely in the right way around. As I said, you might not have to do this, so it's worth sort of looking at your connector on your graphics card before you go through this process and checking, because with the first GPU I showed, you didn't have to do this. It worked out of the box, just plugging straight into the graphics card. But with this one, we have to flip around. So a little bit of extra work, but minimal fuss really, especially if you're more competent than I am. On the other end, don't forget to put the clips back in place. So that clip that we took off before, we had to tease it apart in order to hold the controller and the cable together. You have to push that back in together as well and make sure you put those clear plastic clips back on as well. The reason for that is those keep the cables together so everything's nice and neat at the front of the build and will end up looking really nice. So I've shown you outside the case what it looks like and how you set it up. I thought it would be worth demonstrating the process once it's in the build. So here I'm plugging in actually a Corsair 24 pin power cable into the extender cable here. And then I'm gonna plug it into the motherboard. Now you can see there's quite a lot of length here. So you might need to run some of it to the back of your case, depending on your setup or how much of it you wanna show or where the cable's coming from in the build. At the rear, you'll also need to do some cable management to adjust the position of it if you want it to look really neat coming out of that port. But you can see this adds quite a bit of length. 
So you do need a bit of space at the rear to handle the cable because obviously you've got to try and put that 24 pin power cable somewhere as well as the extension cable. So we're dealing with that back there. But then a test boot and you can see it works straight away and is really easy to set up. Now, obviously, you'll need to make sure you've got the wireless controller set up, which we'll get to in a minute, and then use Liam Lee's software to adjust the lighting. Now, for the GPU extension cable, you're going to need to put it through the bottom of the case somewhere so that it will run up nicely and then use that right angle connector to go into the graphics card. In this Vision Compact case that I'm using, I found that I could just about get it in the bottom right-hand side of the motherboard below there, but it does have quite a chunky clip on it, so it was difficult to get through into that position. I had to remove the bottom fans in order to be able to do it, but once the GPU is in and secured, you can then run this cable into that and plug it in. Now this is beneficial here because it means the RGB cable isn't pushing up against the glass, so there's no additional pressure on that, and that's a 4090 in there, so there's not much space in the case once that's in there, but it does still fit. At the back end, plug the 12 volt high power cable into the extender, and then that's then set up. So here's what that looks like as the standard setup. And you can see there's quite a bit of length still in that bottom GPU cable, so I could maybe tidy that up a little bit. Now I wanted to also demonstrate that it is possible to use these in a vertical GPU mount. So this is Lee and Lee's vertical GPU mount that you can buy separately, and you can install that in your case to make your graphics card look nice. And then I've run that cable over the top and plugged it in in the same way. I didn't have to flip the connector over, it just runs through like this. And then you've got even more cable on show if that's something you wanted to do and if you wanted to get the connector away from the glass even more. Now here's the wireless connector that I was talking about. This doesn't come with all the cables. You need to make sure you buy the right cables with this controller. You can buy this controller separately or you'll get it with the wireless fans. And as standard, the easiest way to use it is to plug it into the back of your motherboard on a spare USB port. However, if you don't want to use a USB port, there is an alternative. At the end of this controller, you'll see there's a little hole there for another cable, which is also included with that. You plug that into there, and then on the other end of it, it has two connections which you need to run to your motherboard. So this can be used in two different ways. You can either plug it into your motherboard or you can plug it into your motherboard inside the build. So this requires connection to a PWM fan header, so a chassis fan header or system fan header, and also the USB port on your motherboard as well. So this will then allow you to power and control the RGB lighting. So for demonstration purposes, on this live mixer motherboard, you'll see at the very bottom we have two USB ports and chassis fan connectors. Plug the USB cable into that, and then the fan power connector into a chassis fan connector, and that is that controller then powered internally. Then download the latest version of L-Connect. By the way, if you already have L-Connect installed, uninstall that, download the latest version and install that. It's the easiest way to make sure that the cables will work correctly. And then you'll be able to go into here, and you'll see there's a wireless sync setup option in there. You should see the streamers listed in there and make sure they are bound to that controller and to the system by clicking the little icon in there to bind them along with any other things you've got in there. So obviously you've got two of the streamers and then also multiple wireless fans as well in the system. They're all bound in here and connected to it. And then under the streamer wireless connection options here, you can then go through and set the RGB effects. There are loads in there from the drop down. You can adjust the speed, the direction, the brightness, and all of them. And then you can sync to all of the streamers. So actually both of them, you don't have to do them individually. You can do them both at the same time. So you've got the same lighting across both of them and set it up that way. Also, you can use the quick sync lighting option on the left hand side menu to sync the lighting on here with the fans if you prefer but you get more lighting options in the drop downs here than you do on the quick lighting sync settings which is worth bearing in mind but if you're like me and you like to just have your lighting all on blue or on a static color then you can do that really easily the other lighting effects are quite in your face in some ways but you can slow them down if you want to or speed them up if you like things really crazy and fast and so there's plenty of options to choose from in here and a nice variety there. And then you've got a build which is nicely RGB'd up 
with loads of other RGB goodness. I'm going to do a separate video on the fans if you'd like to find out more about that. And hopefully this has been helpful. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.